Previously on Power Reviews. The good doctor has modified our camcorder with a ton of new bells and whistles. Same person, different worlds. K. Quantum phenomenon. Propagation device. Wireless interdimensional interface. Voice print acknowledged. The transdimensional tear from the hallway. You were sent by Hexagon to infiltrate alphabet soup, which crossed over into our world through an unstable interdimensional rift, an electromagnetic pulse burst, and the collision between two alternate universe counterparts. It's the end of the world. Five. It's morphin' time. Four. Phantom three, Ranger. Two. One. I'm you, Shadow Archetype. There's nothing for you out there. We'll see about that. Dennis? Here I come, Ranger fans. And now, Database Rangers Power Review. Greetings, Ranger fans, and welcome to Power Reviews. Is it working? We still need to undergo proper calibration, but it does appear that the Reconnaissance and Rescue Selective Quantum Utility Electronic Eyeline Mark II is operational. Yes! The R2 Squee 2 is up and running. We're not calling it that. Maybe you're not calling it that. I'm the one who had to remod Guy's old security camera while you were busy conducting operational analysis on the long-range extra-dimensional scanners of the wireless interdimensional interface. Well, I was going to say playing with the Wii, but when you put it like that... He's away on business. Are, Are you, you sure he's, he's okay? okay? We haven't seen him. Since laundry day. And, and that, that was, was last year. year. I... I'm sure he's fine. Really? Yes. Okay. okay. We look forward to seeing you again. Bye, Bye guy. Goodbye. I think they're getting suspicious. Did you at least have any luck out there? None. That makes three sweeps now. If he's inside the facility, I can't find him. Well, is there any chance they could have him locked in a secret bunker or something? Doubtful. But if they do, it's someplace well outside my clearance level. And that's saying something. Great. There's more. This isn't one of those bad news, worse news things, is it? Afraid so. I almost ran into a few old colleagues of mine. What? Don't worry, I wasn't seen. But it looks like Alphabet Soup is back in town. Well, I suppose it was only a matter of time. Either way, we'll need to deal with them sooner or later. True. But for now, let's focus on the task at hand and proceed with our contingency plan. Have a seat. Why? What are we doing? We're going to review an episode. You're joking, right? Nope! She's joking, right? As I said, Agent, have a seat. <sighs> Greetings, Ranger fans! I can't believe I'm doing this. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Power, Power Reviews! Reviews. So guys, I know it's been a while since our last review, and our usual host isn't here, but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate a brand new season, right? Sure. Exactly! So, when we left off in Endgame, the season finale of Power Rangers Megaforce, the big bad alien armada had finally arrived to conquer Earth, the good guys had misplaced their robotic operating buddy, and Major Baddie Rock had decided to go into hiding for some reason. So, now we get to see what happens next, and how the producers will go about making the pirate-themed 35th anniversary series, um... How do you pronounce that? Kaizoku Sentai Go Kaija. Ah, thanks. Doi itashimashite. Okay, so, how they'll make that work out with the groundwork laid out by the 20th anniversary Power Rangers season to make a 21st anniversary Power Rangers season that actually works as a thing. I think that made sense. None of this makes sense. Anyway, Let's see how this bundle of weirdness works out with episode one of Power Rangers Super Megaforce. Super Megaforce. So we start off with the previously on segment summing up everything we just went over. I guess we're not exactly off to a great start. Anyway, the episode proper opens up on the Armada flagship. Argus, Levira, our invasion went well. Wait, the invasion's over already? When did that happen? Apparently, shortly after the writers missed the day that they taught show, don't tell. I wish I had a device that could locate your lost brother, Vrock. Thank you. But we must assume Vrock fell in battle. In that case, maybe they should work on a device to stop name-dropping an existing villain and instead give us the name of this new one. Uh, it says here that Vrock's brother is named Prince... 
Vecker. Veker? Vecare? Something like that. Do they ever mention it in this episode? Uh, no. Anyway, let's take a look at the opening credits, which has a flying pirate ship, and shiny pirate suits with pirate swords, and little tiny action figures that make them turn into pirates. I'm sensing a theme here. Is it the Mickey Mouse Club? Because they really seem set on keeping that whole mouseketeer introduction thing. I really wish they would stop doing that. Especially if they're set on keeping that whole secret identities thing. Well, at least it looks like there'll be some cool- wait. Is that Mighty Morphin? Mystic Force. Wild Force. SPD. What? Apparently there are going to be a lot of past references this time around. Including ones to the future. Either way, it looks like we've got a pretty interesting season ahead of us. Interesting is definitely one word for it. Hey look! Some non-dream-filtered footage of all the rangers in one place. I can think of somebody who really would have liked that title, Smash. Let's just try to stay focused here. The Armada deposits their ex-Borg foot soldiers using airborne junkyard cranes alongside their newest monster, whose name I failed to catch. I get the impression this happens a lot. The flat top bots are making a sweep for any lingering humans, but run into a big surprise when they decide to go to the mall. What did you just do? I got an app for that. So, while Emma's busy saving that not Ernie guy who's apparently lost his spot in the opening credits, Noah's doing the same over at the high school where he's managed to find some random extras in the computer lab. But now I need you to help take care of the school. Look for any other kids that might be hiding. And do what with them? You guys can do this. I reiterate, do what? Um, uh, maybe we'll find out later. Over at their mildly damaged headquarters, G and Jake recover from their big off-screen battle. We tried calling you. But the Armada must have knocked out all communications. That wouldn't really explain why he's not responding to them now, though. Noah shows up next to give his two friends a hug and to give Tensu a poorly composited pat on his little CG head before Emma joins the group and Gosei finally decides to speak up. The world has never seen an invasion like this. Really? What? November 20th, 1998. United Alliance of Evil. Universal Invasion Force. Over a thousand Velocifighters and countless ground troops targeting Earth alone. And if not for the sacrifice of the great Eltaran wizard that this idiot claims is his mentor, we would have been wiped out. So, the world has seen an invasion like this before? Yes! Wait, when did you say this was? November 20th, 1998. Why? Oh, uh, no reason. Please, just continue with the review. Fine. After realizing that the War Star aliens from the last season were just the first wave, their discussion is interrupted by a sound at the entrance of the cave. And it's Troy. Are you sure you won't follow? It's Troy! <gasps> what, what do you, do you know? know? It's, it's Troy. Troy. So after that short bit of false drama, Troy explains that he's been looking for Robo Knight, who Gosei apparently still hasn't fitted with a GPS since the last time they lost him. As a consolation, they're... Mentor gives them a new set of morphers and keys to unlock their new <sighs> super mega force mode. A mode even stronger than ultra mode. That's not all. A brand new Ferrari! Please stop that. Sorry. What they really get is an extra mode on top of that called legendary mode, so they can access the powers of every Power Ranger that's ever existed. And some that don't. Nothing we ever do is easy. Considering you were just handed every power ever without so much as a walk down the street, I beg to differ. And not one of them even seems to bother asking why none of this has been mentioned to them before now. The only question any of them seems to care about is... Am I the only one who notices that my key is the wrong color? Jake, there's a simple explanation for that. Which is... Put your new powers to use. I guess the world may never know. Meanwhile, yet another unnamed villain has noticed the handful of ex-Borgs that have been defeated by the Rangers, and the Armada decides to renew their attack. Again. This leads to the Megaforce Rangers finally arriving on the battlefield. We better go Ultra Mode! No. 
Not ultra. Super mega. That will never not sound stupid. The morph sequence is pretty cool, at least, as the rangers summon their super mega suits over their non-super mega suits with multicolored X's flying all over the place, which apparently in the Sentai sequence were three X's and a V to represent the 35th season, but here are just X's, which I guess is supposed to be for the 20th season, even though it's technically the 21st, but maybe the reason they have two pairs of X's instead of one is because it's supposed to be the second part of the 20th season, and... And the internet is really not helping me out on this one. Let's just get this over with. The Super Mega Force Rangers use their flintlock pistols, Super Mega Blasters, and grappling hook launching, cutlass inspired Super Mega Sabres to battle the X-Borgs, experimenting with all kinds of dual wielding as they swap their weapons back and forth for different combination attacks, which include saber whips, which I will admit is actually pretty cool looking. Pretty soon, they get bored with their new powers and decide to try out legendary modes, starting with... Go, go, Samurai! Power Ranger Samurai! How legendary. Unsurprisingly, they quickly get bored with these powers as well, and change things up to... Magical Swords Mystic Force! Power Rangers Mystic Force! Huh. What? They gave Mystic Force Yellow a skirt instead of Mystic Force Blue. Interesting. You pay more attention to this show than you let on, don't you? Maybe. Well, unfortunately, the Wizard Rangers with the cool capes don't last very long, and everyone's forced back down to Super Mega Mode, which is still more than enough to defeat the monster as they plug their Ranger keys into their Super Mega Sabers for a final strike. Now that's a Super Mega win! That will also never not sound stupid. Oh, and apparently that monster's name was Hedridge. It was briefly mentioned by that gold guy who the prince is yelling at to get a new monster. Um... Demaris already called up Tanka's boss. There we go! Name dropping all over the place now. Yes! Apparently, yes. So, Tenticus the Cthulhu bot starts blasting up the city, so the Super Mega Force Rangers start blasting up the flat top bots and playing switcheroo with their weapons again. The monster then unleashes a missile barrage, forcing the Rangers to summon the SPD powers from the future to snipe them away, before calling on the depleted Ninja Storm powers of the past to disable him with a Ninja Shadow battle. They then decide to end things with more Red Ranger powers than I've ever seen this side of the moon, using the firepower of Mystic Force and Operation Overdrive the fierce claws of Wild Force and Jungle Fury, and the sword skills of the samurai to deliver a fiery finisher. Of course, anyone who knows the format knows things don't end here, as Lavira activates her new Maximizer device. We no longer need Zombats, and we can enlarge more than one monster at a time. Huh? They're doing it without Zombats! Now they can grow four at once? I don't know why, but I'm starting to get the impression that they're doing that on purpose. Yeah, me too. Naturally, their new powers come with new Zords. In this case, a giant red flying pirate ship. The Super Mega Skyship then lets the Super Mega Wheeler, Super Mega Sub, Super Mega Racer, and Super Mega Jet out of Super Mega Hammer Space to blast the monsters for a bit before flying out into space and combining to form the Super Mega Hat-Wearing Legendary Megazord. It flies and flips and hacks and slashes and apparently has a giant wheel in its back that activates a giant chest cannon, which is interesting, and which it uses to finish off the monsters with its Super Mega Starburst. Super Mega Rangers, that's a Super Mega win! Have I mentioned how much that will never not sound stupid? After the fight, the rangers head back to the school, where they find out that the students have taken Noah's super mega vague orders from earlier and really ran with them. Now all we need is a teacher. Where's Mr. Burley? Wait, they did all this without any help from the teachers? And this school only needs one teacher? And none of them thought to check for the school's only teacher in what is obviously his office? Let's just finish this. Noah saves Burley's junk, convinces him to return to the teaching job he never quit, Burley gets applause for no reason, gives an inspirational speech quoting Troy from the beginning of last year, establishing that he really is the only teacher if the students keep taking his class every year, and Troy skips school to stare at the ocean and wonder what happened to Robonite. Done. And that's the end of our episode. So, what did we think of it? Well, Guy, what did you think? Honestly? Despite what initially appeared as a missed opportunity with the post-invasion time skip, the dire nature of the new threat was conveyed well through the repurposing of familiar set pieces and the clear exhaustion of our main cast. The fast-paced and relentless action sequences also complemented that intent. The script, on the other hand... We no longer need Zombats, and we can enlarge more than one monster at a time. They're doing it without Zombats! Now they can grow four at once? We better go Ultra Mode! No. 
not ultra. Super mega. 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 Am I the only one who notices that my key is the wrong color? There's a simple explanation for that. Makes me feel as if the show borders on being a parody of its source material. Actually, I'm starting to think this might be intentional. What? Well, I've been looking through their credits, and it seems like most of their experience is in anime dubs. So? So this is Saban. Have you seen their anime dubs? <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I laughing at? I'm supposed to be depressed! They're kind of purposefully ridiculous. Which is actually the best way to look at this weak exposition, repetitive dialogue, and clearly nonsensical educational system. I mean, it looks like the writers have just realized how absurd the show is and are just making fun of themselves now. I'm really not sure if that's supposed to make me feel better or worse. Well, at least overall, this episode did seem to raise the stakes since last season. They got in a lot of good action and poured in a ton of references to the past. And future. And future seasons. Plus, the sillier parts of the plot and the dialogue are a lot more entertaining when the writers are in on the joke. Provided that you believe that this is a joking matter. Okay. So, be sure to join us next time when we'll look into episode 2 of Power Rangers Super Mega Force, Earth Fights Back. Until then, farewell, farewell Ranger, Ranger fans, fans, and let, and let the, the power protect, protect you. you. Done. We're fully calibrated? Affirmative. Awesome. The R2 Squee 2 is ready to go. We're still not calling it that. Would one of you please explain why I just subjected myself to that? Can I explain? I want to explain. Fine. Okay, so the original Squee? Selective quantum utility. Yeah, whatever. It had a GPS chip installed, and Doc K here was tracking it through the whole end of the world thing. And? When the portal was sealed, we lost signal. Boom. Gone. So it was destroyed. That's the thing. There were no signs of failure. No energy fluctuations. It was just there one moment, gone the next. So you're saying that... It followed him through. He's still out there. He's just not here. Then how are we supposed to get him back? The wireless interdimensional interface. I've been analyzing its functionality. It does far more than just stabilize transdimensional tears into portals. Its primary function is as a navigational device. It can pinpoint and guide targets from across dimensions. How? All that's needed is a sample frequency to lock on to. For an organic, that would require an identical biorhythm, which, regrettably, we do not have access to. But for a device, we just rebuild it and then calibrate to match the frequency. Precisely. So what's our next step? We need a portal. You can't be serious. Just a small one, and we'll seal it back up as soon as he comes through. And if he doesn't, what are we supposed to do then? And what are we supposed to do when your old colleagues inevitably deduce what happened at their facility and attempt to replicate it? This is our only option. What do you want from me? Man the workstation. After we generate the tear, activate the wireless interdimensional interface to stabilize. The targeting sequence has already been initiated. All right. Let's do this, then. Right here, then? This was the original detonation point of the EMP, and my readings show there's still enough residual disturbance that we should be able to open a new tear. Okay, then. Are you ready? Standing by. Are you? Let's find out. Let's hurry this up! You're a man. Let the power protect me. So, what'd I miss? 